What's up, everyone? It is finally time to dive into the, I call it a wall, the library, the archive, the collection. We're finally diving into it. We're going to take a pretty long chance to kind of dive headfirst into my collection. So hang along. Let's have some fun. So my original concept for trying to kind of go through the whole entire collection was like, I'll do slip covers, I'll do boutiques and I'll do them all separately. And I tried that before and I kind of added stuff and it's just like, I think this is my third attempt at doing a, a whole video. And, and honestly, I, I want to keep these a little bit more contained a little quick, but I also, I want to talk about what I have and, and why we have it and why we bought it and why it, you know, is on these shelves. So I figured I would kind of do this a little bit differently and I'm going to get to do a whole series and I'm just going to make it a video per shelf. And there's different, when I say a shelf, um, like here I have all the movies off the shelf and I will also talk about the three things that are on the shelf. I'm trying to figure out how to maneuver my finger here. Um, and then when it comes to like this back here, I'll just do it, you know, long form. And I figured it would just give me a chance to kind of talk about my titles a little bit more, a little bit more in depth and also not have to worry about hoping people will sit through an hour and 45 minute video. So let's just dive right in into shelf one. So shelf one, I have I have my section split up by slip covers and non slip covers. I think they just look better on the shelf that way. But uh, first up we have Michael Bay's 13 hours. Um, I bought this because I, I had this grand idea I was gonna do this like Michael Bay retrospective video and I'm still kind of working on that, but it's taking longer than I thought and the slip covers icky because i actually found this at a goodwill but i'm a big fan of michael bay um i liked 13 hours i think i like when bay is bombastic and extreme and kind of when he tapers down it i, I don't like it as much but i still enjoy it it's kind of like this weird uh thing with bay where i want him either like full crazy or <laughs> like uh super serious you know and, and it's very rare that he dips into the ultra seriousness um, but 13 Hours is fun. I do think it's his most serious film. I think the action is still, you know, crazy bay. But uh, I do enjoy it. Not my favorite from him, but 13 Hours. And then, I mean, talk about Bayhem, actually, as the back of this says. Uh, we have Ambulance. Erica and I watched this on Peacock when it first came out. I think it was Peacock. And I uh, actually had a ton of fun with it. Uh, this is a remake of a... Is it Finnish or Swedish, maybe? of a? I actually just found out the other day that this is actually a remake um but yeah i had a lot of fun with ambulance i think it's a little too long it clocks in at two hours and 17 minutes i do think uh sort of in the middle of it there's a bit of a stretch but i like the plot i absolutely love jake gyllenhaal in this film i remember I used to erica and i still today quote a couple select moments with <laughs> jake gyllenhaal in this film but um I, I like seeing michael bay back doing more original stuff as opposed to you know transformers stuff you know there's is a nice return for him so um yeah ambulance this was a lot of fun i was happy to finally own that next up we have george a romero's the amusement park and this was a super 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 cool release to get from shutter this originally landed on shutter um this was actually a a lost film it's only 58 minutes i think 54 minutes long and this was initially lost this was directed by george a romero in trying to remember the year and i can't remember off the top of my head um this was directed by george romero it was sort of a psa short film style um and it's about this elderly gentleman kind of going through this nightmare scenario at this amusement park and it's um a, a, a psa about how much we as a society kind of disrespect and toss off the elderly um, and it's extremely effective and it's it's incredible what Romero was able to do in very short span. There are films that are, you know, 90 plus minutes, 120 plus minutes that aren't able to get the amount of terror that <laughs> that this 54 minutes kind of, uh, you know, encompasses. And it's really awesome to find these older Romero projects and get them out into the limelight. It's even cooler that Shutter always teaming up with RLJE and putting out such a great release like this. If you haven't seen the amusement park, uh, take the time. It's on Shutter. It's out on Blu-ray from RLJE. It's really a wicked, wicked little mini film, and I'm, I'm happy it's out, honestly. 
So next up we have Babylon. I am not the biggest fan of Damien Chazelle. Um, I, I, I've, I've never seen La La Land. I'm just not the biggest musical person. And even Erica, who is a musical person, um, isn't kind of over the moon about La La Land. Um, I saw... I haven't seen Whiplash. She liked that. I think that's going to be the other film by, by him that I do like. Um, and I, I, I thought First Man was a little bland. Just I just couldn't get into it like I like I thought I could. Um, but I picked up Babylon from a Facebook seller, and this looked pretty much right up my alley. I was like, yeah, I love the time period. I love the story. The trailers just kind of pulled me in. And, uh, yeah, this movie, there's I, – I love most of it, right? Like – I absolutely love the production design. I love the style. I, I absolutely adore Margot Robbie in this role. I love Brad Pitt in this role. Um, there, there's some stuff. It is three hours long, three hours and eight minutes to be exact. Um, so it's a lot to take in. It's very silly and extreme, and it goes like way beyond you know where you think it's gonna go. It just it, within the first five minutes, I'm talking about just extremities that you know you haven't seen since the later entries in, in, in the scary movie franchise, which is kind of crazy that it's kind of slapped in this film, but that's what this whole movie is. It, it, it's showing uh, kind of a, a snapshot in film history and Hollywood history that was extreme and was crude and, and all that stuff. And it's sort of amplified by 10 and it just makes for this really wicked ride. And, you know, in a 188 minute film like this, you have people who are going to either love it or people that are going to hate it. I, I very rarely saw people kind of fall in the middle who were like, yeah, I like it. Me, I I loved it. I loved most of it. Um, And I just had a ton of fun with it. There were moments where I'm, I'm laughing like crazy and I'm like, what the hell am I watching? And there's other moments. There's a particular moment where Margot Robbie gets her chance on the set and she has to produce a single tear. And it's fantastic. Like absolutely incredible moment. And, and at the same time, uh, right around that scene, we have Brad Pitt's character shooting a um, a film, and there's this beautiful sunset, and there, there's this, these beautiful moments, and then the next, it's cocaine and throwing up, and it's just, it's really crazy. So I had a ton of fun with Babylon. I really enjoyed it. I, I'm, I think I'm finally on the Damien Chazelle wagon. It only took four films uh, for me to get on it, though, with Babylon. Next up, we have Becky. I'm super happy that this movie is finally getting the attention it deserves. Um, I feel like for years, there were very few people who kind of knew about this film, and they were kind of uh, <laughs> shouting it out like, hey, everybody needs to see Becky. And then all of a sudden, the trailer for a sequel drops, Wrath of Becky. Um, it gets a lot of attention. Ronan Flicks put out a beautiful copy of this film, um, and it got a ton of attention. So I'm super happy to see that. I know Wrath of Becky did pretty well i think and it's limited release but yeah becky is awesome i actually love kevin james in this role i just love the shaved head and the beard look um it's my it, it's a mean main main film it's bloody as hell and i'm really hoping that the release of the sequel kind of kicks off this, this little cult franchise because um i think this film and the character really deserves it so that's becky and then we have uh my personal favorite uh, Tim Burton film, and that is Big Fish. I was really disappointed by this 4K because I just don't think it really looks all that great. But um, anyway, this was, you know, I'd always been a Tim Burton fan, Beetlejuice and Sweeney Todd. And, you know, there was a lot of projects that he did kind of when I was a little bit younger that obviously was a big fan of Nightmare Before Christmas, like just all that stuff, right? Obviously, I'm a fan. But then Big Fish came along. And um, this kind of hit me. This was, what, 2003? So I was, like, 13 when I saw this. And I just love the the, the, the giant mystical adventure plot. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. And one of my favorite songs by my, one of my favorite bands, Yellow Card, they, they wrote a song uh, based on the story of Big Fish. And this movie just captivated me, and I fell in love with it. And it really hit me, uh, you know, emotionally. And I, it's a movie that I really never stopped thinking about i always am like if i'm sitting down and i'm talking to people about movies that emotionally really kind of interrupted me and kind of put me in a strange place i always bring up big fish because um i believe that there are very few movies that really capture the magic of filmmaking and the magic of that that marriage between storytelling and filmmaking that's so beautiful and i feel like that's an art that's a little bit lost now um and in 2003 big fish was just 
that movie to me. So I'm kind of <laughs> rambling on about it, but yeah, Big Fish. I, I love that movie to death. Next up, we have the Bill and Ted trilogy. Uh, I love all three of these. I remember being a little bit scared about Face the Music. Obviously, they're older and things change. And, you know, it's not the 80s anymore. So it was kind of like, you know, will these characters kind of stay relevant? And they did. Face the Music was incredible. Uh, Bogus Journey is my favorite, but Excellent Adventure is still fantastic. So that is the three film pack there. Next up, this is the Blumhouse remake of Black Christmas, which I enjoyed. Um, it, I, PG-13 horror, Blumhouse, I'm sort of like up in the air about. I'm not really sold until, like, I I always kind of have with Blumhouse, like, this, this like, hesitation, but also this kind of excitement. But um, I actually had some fun with this. I, I really didn't love all of it, but I had enough fun with it. I mean, obviously, it doesn't touch the original. In my opinion, it doesn't even touch the 2006 remake. But uh, as a standalone, cool little Black Christmas film, I think it did a pretty good job there. Uh, Black Swan. I actually picked this up at a, was it a, uh, a pawn shop? Um, I've never seen them. I am a big fan of Darren Aronofsky and, and as I kind of grow as a, you know, as a, as a, as a film fan, there are certain movies that I now kind of open up to and I, I do want to watch and I do want to enjoy. And, uh, Black Swan is one of those. So, um, this is on my list to watch soon. I'm actually thinking about doing like a Suspiria and this kind of double feature, I think that would be a lot of fun. Next up, we have the Blade trilogy. Blade is a bona fide classic. Uh, Blade 2 is fantastic. Obviously, Guillermo del Toro knocks it out of the park. Uh, and then Blade Trinity is bad, but it's a kind of a like a, a guilty pleasure for me in a way. You have Ryan Reynolds kind of doing this early Deadpool act, kind of doing this you know, the Ryan Reynolds thing, Jessica Alba's kicking ass. The story is, eh, you have Triple H. There's fart jokes. There's, you know, funny stuff throughout. And it's, it's okay. It's just a shame that that's where we kind of left off the trilogy. I do wish there was another chance. Maybe Guillermo del Toro came back and did another one. Kind of rounded out Blade's story. But, you know, it is what it is. So that is the Blade 3 pack. Braveheart, uh, Bonafide Classic. Um, I, I remember watching this and thinking, man, this is much slower than i remember it being i don't know for whatever reason i thought maybe i was kind of confusing this with braveheart in my mind but uh yeah braveheart the ending is fantastic i love that movie to death we have ah uh, yes some s craig zoller with brawl in cell block 99 uh this movie's wicked if you've never watched an s craig zoller film before <laughs> be be prepared for a little bit of a unique experience the odd or the not the audio um the dialogue is there's a certain flow to it that that feels a little off it it's shot unique it, the violence is outrageous um and, and you have vince vaughn just kicking ass pretty much this whole entire movie and this movie is brutal like incredibly brutal um but it's always a good time to throw this in um i remember i actually picked this up at walmart actually because i love this the uh inside art there i picked this up at walmart i had at this time i hadn't seen bone tomahawk yet um so i didn't know what i was in for and just kind of being a little shocked and a little i don't know uncomfortable when it was over but just being like man that was freaking awesome and now that um i've seen bone tomahawk and dragged across concrete and i've seen this multiple times i'm kind of uh, a giant fan of s craig zoller and i can't wait to see what he does next so Raw in cell block 99 let's see let's dive into uh something else here so up next we have bridesmaids and i've actually i had never seen this and i told erica i'd never seen it and she was like what the hell what do you mean you've never watched bridesmaids before uh so we finally put it on one day and i watched it and i had a blast with it i thought it was hilarious so i came across it at a goodwill and had to pick it up and add it in the collection so absolutely love that movie uh, another Goodwill pickup with a bullet to the head. I've never seen this. I've never even seen a trailer for this before, but it's uh, it's sly. It's action. It looks wild. I read some decent reviews, and I think it was half price day, so I think I paid $1.99 for this. So I added that to the collection. Uh, next up, Bullet Train. So I am a fan of, of David Leach and his films. I did really enjoy Deadpool 2. Um... And I know that I didn't get a chance to see 
What was the movie that he did after John Wick? I forget. It was kind of like a female John Wick. I think it was Joy. Oh, I forget what it is. I'm just having a brain fart right now. But uh, Bullet Train was a ton of fun. We did end up watching this on streaming before I picked it up. Um, I had an absolute blast with it. I loved the characters. I loved the cast in this film. I think the action is fantastic. Uh, believe it or not, our favorite part is at the end during the train crash when Brad Pitt is being uh, he's being thrown through the train in this really cool slow motion shot and he gets bunged on the head by, a, I think it's like a steel coffee pot that's also moving through the air. Um, <laughs> but other than that, uh, yeah, I love Aaron Taylor Johnson in this as well. I remember being like, is that the dude from Kick-Ass? Like, we were, like, halfway through the movie. <laughs> it's like, wait, that's the kid from Kick-Ass. Uh, so Bullet Train, yeah, I had a lot of fun with. And I just heard that they're working on a sequel, which I'm 100% here for. So that has my support. Uh, next up, we have the requel to Candyman. Candyman. I loved this. I saw it twice in theaters. I saw it once on my own, and then um, Erica and I went together and saw it. Um, I thought they did an absolutely fantastic job. I love how this movie is shot. I love the whole aesthetic. I like how they kind of updated it into modern day, which is it's really funny because, you know, Candyman came out in the early 90s, and it's still so relevant today, and maybe not the exact location of where, you know, where it's shot, but just the 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 themes of of race and inequality and, and, and Candyman in himself are still so relevant today. So it kind of made it, simple for them to i don't want to say simple but it, it is still so relevant that you're able to adapt it really well into modern times and i, I that's really what they did here in this movie it, it freaks me out the ending which spoiler alert if you haven't seen the ending there's an extremely brief return of tony todd um he kind of comes out of the bees and he you know tell everyone and it just gave me goosebumps the first the second time i saw every single time i watched this movie I'm just anticipating that brief moment after the friggin' incredible ending uh, where he pops back up. But Nia DaCosta absolutely did an incredible job. This was produced by Jordan Peele um, and Monkey Paw Productions. So um, it was really, really, really a good experience. And I still, still love that movie to death. It looks great on 4K too. Next up, we have the remake of Carrie. I got this a long, long time ago. And I used to really like this movie. And then I kind of, watch it again and i was like yeah and i think i watched it the the last time i watched it i watched it kind of like back to back with brian de palmas and that is what kind of put a sour taste in my mouth and one thing i oh first of all i do love the uh lenticular slip on here that's really cool but um i, I just hate like this is one of those cases where they they didn't really have the the budget or i think like the skill to pull off what de palma did in the in in the original which is a shame because it was 30 plus years prior but uh they opted out for visual effects for pretty much the entire last act of prom scene and i just was not a fan of it and i am a fan of chloe grace moretz i don't love her in this role i actually think the standout role in this is uh julianne moore as the mother so that is carrie uh next up we have this is one of erica's and this is a charlie brown christmas i used to watch this all the time when i was a kid um i think we got this for like seven bucks at target during the christmas thing that's one of those exclusive slip covers but yeah i mean who doesn't love the peanuts come on come on come on where's my energy drink at i have no idea uh child's play this was the 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 remake from um i don't is it orion right it's orion pictures right um i saw this in theaters i had a lot of fun with it but what more so kind of left uh, a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth is just kind of how they were treating Don Mancini and they were like, Oh, Don Mancini, go do your, your show with your character. And we're just going to, we're just going to take Chucky and, and make him new. We're just going to do a fresh reboot and make it technology based. And, um, you know, it did okay. And it, it's fine. It's a good three star film for me. I had fun with it. Um, it was just okay. And it's just kind of weird how it just exists. Like in this weird zeitgeist of the child's play franchise, which it doesn't exist in the franchise because it's not canon. It's just this weird little offshoot. So uh, they were talking about a sequel. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Uh, next up, Christmas Bloody Christmas. Um, I love Joe Bagos as a director. I hate him as a writer because the first like 25 minutes of this movie is just absolutely unbearable. But anything involving 
this robot this ro- robotic robotic santa tearing apart innocent victims is incredible i also love this movie was shot on if i remember correctly it was shot on 70 millimeter I forget what they shot this film, but it looks incredible. I love the natural green. I love the colors. I just visually love this movie so much. Just keep it on mute for like the first 25 minutes. Outside of that, you don't really need to know uh, much of anything else. Whoa! So we have another Target exclusive Christmas slipcover here. Uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Um, National Lampoon's Vacation is one of my favorite films of all time. So this is a watch for me around you know every single Christmas. I freaking love Cousin Eddie absolutely love them uh next up we have clerks three i actually haven't seen this yet i've been kind of planning this triple feature of all three of these films so i haven't checked it out yet but i've heard great things we have the collection they did not release the collector with the slipcover so the sequel is just kind of sitting here but if luckily i think in the last like three or four years there's been a lot more attention on uh this was supposed to be a trilogy with the collected and just not getting the chance to do it um but the collector is fantastic the collection is also great um the collector makes for an incredible killer these movies are brutal as all hell but there's a little bit of like a twang to them that makes them a ton of fun um and 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 honestly when it comes down to great trilogies i do think this would fit in it if we ever get the third film which i hope i really really hope that uh that's his name yeah marcus dunstan gets a chance to finish that third one i think it was shut down like mid-production i I don't know why but it's ridiculous but yeah these movies are awesome uh we have actually a little bit of a trilogy here we have creed which i enjoy very much creed 2 which is actually my favorite like i love creed 2 i i i love the first creed but i love creed 2 i know that's kind of a hot take a lot of people don't love this movie um i do i just i this is the one i keep going back to for whatever reason uh and then i most recently picked up creed 3 i haven't seen it yet i haven't heard the the greatest things um so it's kind of pushed back my excitement and like my need to watch it now but i will be checking it out soon but yeah brand new edition there with creed 3 we have David Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future. I picked this up pretty much as soon as it came out, I think. I know it just got announced for a 4K from uh, Second Save Films, which is awesome. And yeah, I enjoy it. I liked it. I didn't love it. Maybe I just didn't get it. Maybe I'm uh, you know, not smart enough for Cronenberg films, but uh, I liked it. Yeah, it, it was fine for me. It was a perfectly fine David Cronenberg film. And people now are probably tuning out. They're like, what the hell? um anyway next up we have gore verbinski's a cure for wellness um i love this movie a very early mia goth role visually this movie is wicked i think it takes a crazy turn in the third act i mean this movie's 150 some minutes so let's see 146 minutes so um it takes a, a long time to get there but it takes this kind of crazy turn in the third act but uh, each time I watch it, I have fun with it. So great atmosphere. Gore Verbinski, great scale. Uh, that's a cure for wellness. I always have fun with that one. And then we have The Cursed. This is a really cool little werewolf movie that I haven't seen many people talk about. Um, I remember I picked this up at Best Buy when it came out. It was a Tuesday where like nothing else had come out. I kept seeing this and I was like you know what i think i want to grab it i think it was like 14.99 or something and we ended up watching it and actually had a lot of fun with it it does kind of call back to the kind of older school universal classic monster style of werewolf but mix in some cool visuals and a lot more gore than you got in those original ones and you get the curse it's not perfect but it's a lot of fun and i'm happy to have it in the collection and we have the dark and the wicked i haven't seen this yet i know it's directed by brian bertino who did the strangers um, I've heard incredible things, but I still need to check that out. Eli Roth's Death Wish. It's fine. I mean, it's okay. Uh, one of my personal favorite Quentin Tarantino films with Django Unchained. Um, patiently waiting for a really good 4K release of this film because I think it deserves it. And I'm really hoping this pile next to me doesn't just topple over at any second. Uh, we have Mike Flanagan's Dr. Sleep, which I was a massive fan of. Massive, massive, massive fan of this movie. Um, the director's cut, though, the three-hour version. I actually haven't seen the theatrical cut. 
because I just don't really feel there's a need to. I love the 180 minute cut to death. Mike Flanagan is an incredible storyteller, just a great visual horror teller. And you can tell that he loves The Shining. He just loves it to death. And he kind of put all of that heart uh, and all the passion for the project into this. And I absolutely love this movie. Doctor Sleep is a banger. Uh, Don't Breathe. This is Fide Alvarez. This was his film after um, the Evil Dead remake in 2013. Fantastic little thriller. Love that movie to death. And then you have Don't Breathe 2, which Fide Alvarez actually found in Hired Roto Saigas uh, to direct this. And it's fine. It kind of, you know, you have this, this major twist of protagonist from the first movie. And, you know, you go from hating him in the first to loving him in this one. And then we need to kind of care for him to really understand the emotional depth of this movie and um i don't think it's perfect i think it's i think it's fine though i think it's good uh next up we have don't worry darling this was directed by olivia wilde or yeah was this directed by olivia wilde it was yeah olivia wilde um and the first time i watched this i wasn't a fan and then i rewatched it and I became a fan. So um, outside of all the drama, all the behind the scenes stuff, all the stuff on TMZ and all that crap. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun with Don't Worry Darling. I think this movie is so beautifully shot. Um, Drive Angry. This is directed by Louis Leterrier, Le I think is how you say it. Um, I came across this at a second in Charles. I've seen it uh, like randomly around before. I've actually never seen the movie. Um, it was only a couple bucks, so I figured I would check it out. I haven't watched it yet, though. Then we have, of course, S. Craig Zeller, Dragged Across Concrete. Um, this movie is a a wicked experience. I mean, it's sort of S. Craig Zeller wrapped up. The, you know, the the violence when it happens is brutal. The dialogue is, is is strange but effective, and the movie just kind of pulls you in. And you know, you have this this great balance of of characters that are heroes, but they're actually villains or kind of shit people. And then you have these. The film sets up villains who are actually the the best people in the movie, and you know, in that typical kind of S. Craig Zoller style, the the good guys are the bad guys, the bad guys are the good guys. You're constantly questioning the morale of all of the characters, um, and summed up, it makes for a, a, a blunt 150, a blunt 158 minutes. I don't know if that's urban, but a uh, a, a little bit of a crazy experience. And at 160 minutes, I think this movie moves much faster than it really should. Um, Every single time I watch it, I'm surprised at how fast it flies by. But yeah, Dragged Across Concrete is awesome. What do we got next? We have Due Date, the meanest comedy I think I've ever seen in my life. Like Robert Downey Jr. is so mean in this movie. <laughs> um, but it's hilarious. I mean, he's just... There are times in this movie where I'm not even involved in the jokes. I'm just a spectator. And I'm like, ooh, man. Uh, Todd Phillips in his typical mean-spirited writing style. Um, yeah, this movie's a blast, though. Absolutely love Due Date. And then we have Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. I I admire Nolan as a director. I don't love most of his movies. I just think they're I think they're great theatrical experiences. And then you kind of once you leave the theater and you own it at home, it doesn't really feel the same. Um, but I love Dunkirk. I'm a sucker for just a really, really, really good war story, though. And Dunkirk's cool. It's only 106 minutes, which is significantly shorter than I think most Nolan projects. Um, and I think it has a, a very big impact. I think technically it's extremely well made. There's a little bit of a time thing happening uh, because there's multiple story elements happening at one time. But he kind of does them a little bit ahead of each other that way you can see all the events eventually unfold from all points of view and it's really cool so uh yeah i enjoy dunkirk it seems like the internet kind of doesn't like dunkirk lately i've seen some posts i'm like really you don't like dunkirk uh next up we have elvis boslerman doing his thing i think he's just constantly on cocaine uh this movie's crazy austin butler was great i saw this in theaters and i had a ton of fun with it um, it was one that Erica and I knew we needed to own uh, as soon as it came out. So we do have it. And yes, I still enjoy it greatly. I just rewatched it uh, not too long ago and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, if you follow my channel, you know that I haven't seen all of this yet. I'm just going to leave it at that before somebody yells at me again. Uh, next up, we have Exodus, Gods and Kings. I actually bought this 
um, as part of a retrospective I'm going to be doing on um, on uh, Ridley Scott soon. I've never seen this before, but I've heard good things. Um, this is one of those movies that I constantly kind of like would see in stores and I'd be like, what the hell is this? You know, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, it's a, a freaking Ridley Scott movie. So uh, I'm not a religious person. Uh, this is apparently the story of Moses. So we'll check that out soon. That's Exodus. Only two left. Uh, we have The Fablemans. This is Spielberg's latest film. Sort of a, a little kind of look back story of his life and who he is and his come up. Um, as a filmmaker and I loved this movie this was an early video on the channel for me I did a little review of this um, yeah absolutely love the Fablemans and then ending shelf one with a bang and that is F9 the Fast Saga um, I am not a fan of any of the Fast and Furious movies post seven I liked seven a lot um, I hated eight I hated nine even more the most recent X was terrible. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. But, of course, in typical fashion of a collector, we need to own all of them. And I think I actually got this for, like, under $9. So that's why I added it to the collection at the time that I did. But um, I love they always, they always release these director's cuts, two of these movies. And it's, like, four seconds of scenes added back in that's, like, whatever. So, <laughs> But that is shelf one of the slipcover collection. Um, I'm happy that I decided to do it this way because I'm about a half hour in. I just got through the first shelf, so I'd probably be hours involved just getting through the slipcovers. But uh, let me know down below if you're enjoying this, if you want me to continue doing this. I'm going to continue doing it anyway, whether you like it or not, because that's just how I roll, honestly. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, comment down below what your favorite film that I showed today was. I'm kind of hoping to do this maybe like twice a week, I'm thinking, just so I can blow through the collection. I have I do have an update coming up soon. Um, I'm not really buying as many movies. I'm kind of focusing more on buying like boutique stuff. I did pre-order the It Follows Second Sight 4K. Um, I have the Arrow edition of The Lighthouse coming in today. So I'm kind of investing money into a little bit more um, you know, boutique stuff like that right now. We're, we are saving for a house, so I'm kind of tampering down a little bit i'm still transitioning into the new job so i'm still trying to get finances together from that but um anyway thanks for watching make sure to go follow me on instagram it's going to be at bearded film guy and um yeah i'll have part two coming soon so uh thanks for hanging out i'll catch y'all later